more gerontologists need. According to the World Health Organization, by 2050, which is kind of around a quarter when you think about it, the older adult population is expected to double, reaching roughly 2.1 billion people all around the world. That's why. Turn it up, gang time. Real homies. Real homies. Real homies. Real homies want to know. Real homies want to know. Real homies want to know. What's up, homie? Welcome back to another episode of Real Homies Want to Know. If you're new here, my name is Christina, creator of Jero What? A page for anyone at any age, because y'all, we are all Asian. All right. Today, we are going to be answering the question why are more gerontologists needed? Honestly, I think that's a good question because a lot of times people don't really understand gerontology. They don't understand the role that a gerontologist plays, which then means that they think it's pointless and they're just kind of like, okay, that just sounds like another little extra degree you could have played with when you was in school, but that is not the case, okay? So today we are going to paint a picture with some brief points to why more gerontologists are needed. So let's get to it. The first reason is because the older adult population is steadily increasing. Mm -hmm. This means there's a large number of older adults turning 60 plus every single day. According to the World Health Organization, by 2050, which is kind of around a quarter when you think about it, the older adult population is expected to double, reaching roughly 2.1 billion people all around the world being over the age of 60. That's wild. This supports why we need more professionals in the field of gerontology to support and understand the needs of older adults. The second reason is all about the unique perspectives that a gerontologist has. So I told you that a gerontologist is someone who studies aging, but we do more than that. All of the knowledge that we have regarding aging can be applied in the work that we do. And so often, older adults are overlooked, okay? Well, when you chop it up with a gerontologist, you'll see like, dang, I've never looked through this lens before, and maybe I should, because I'm seeing there are some gaps here and there, or I'm seeing there's some areas that I should shed more light on to ensure that everybody is supported. Uh, when I talk about how complex aging is from a gerontological perspective, and I talk about all the different intersections that come up as it relates to getting older, our race, our age, our gender, all the things. And when I share that all of that influences how people age, it influences how people interact with us, it influences um, the access or lack of access that we have to different supports and all that, people are like, wow, I don't ever think about it like that. So you see, the gerontological perspective is hella unique, okay? And then the third reason is the promotion of age inclusion, which a lot of gerontologists work to ensure older adults are included in all aspects of society. I love talking about intergenerational connections. And as a gerontologist and many gerontologists all over, that's also an area of focus. When we think about how beautiful it is to connect with someone, but taking it a step further and connecting with someone who may be of a different generation, different experiences and lessons and all of the things, and you team it up with someone else, you can see that a lot of the assumptions we once had, the misunderstandings, the communication barriers, you start to see all of those things go away. There's a program of a group of people who are different ages 
coming together, sharing their slang, you know? Now, you know, when it comes to slang, it can be challenging to know what a person is talking about. Well, in this space, you get to share common words that you use in your vocabulary and what they mean. And that makes a world of difference because now it's like, that's what it means when you say, oh yeah, she ate. (laughs) Understanding the meaning behind words that people use really does break communication barriers. I feel like that is also a way to promote inclusion. Everybody wants to be included, whether they admit it or not. But a lot of times when we don't understand the things that come with a person, it's hard to connect. So one of the ways that gerontologists promote age inclusion is by educating people about the aging process. There's so many people who really don't understand the aging process or they don't understand older people, right? They just know what stereotypes are out there and they kind of take it and run with it. But as a gerontologist, we can come in and educate people like I'm doing now about what all comes with aging, how unique it really is, how different it really is, how beautiful it is. And that is a way to promote U N I T Y. So anyway, gerontologists really are needed and it's not a pointless field. It's an area where more focus and emphasis should be placed on because again, we are all aging, meaning we are all getting older and Hopefully, prayerfully, we will reach age 60 or 70 or 80. And we need people who are going to be supporting us. We need people who are already thinking about when that time comes, even if it's 30 years away or 50 years away, whatever. We need people to be thinking about that right now. And that is what gerontologists are doing in their own unique ways. So that's all I got. If you found this information helpful or informative or whatever, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Stay tuned for next week's video. We're going to be learning more about the aging process. What is it, girl? Make sure that you like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel that helps me a lot i want everybody to know about the world of gerontology so the more you share my content the more people can learn about this field so please feel free to share this with one of your homies i in the meantime in between time you be blessed and thank you thank you thank you so much for watching bye turn it up gang time